Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional reading today from Tim and Kathy Keller's uh, daily reader through the book of Proverbs. It's entitled God's Wisdom for Navigating Life. That's a great title. Tells you exactly what it's all about. Uh, The selection I want to read today pulls from Proverbs chapter 3, a couple verses from there. And I thought maybe I'd just give us a little bit of context and give you uh, uh, a a section, a little bit bigger section of Proverbs chapter 3. I'll read a dozen verses, and then we'll we'll see what the uh, Kellers have to say about those. The uh, book of Proverbs just so filled with practical, everyday uh, wisdom, as as they say, for navigating life. So it's God's wisdom for everyday life. And I highly recommend, if you haven't ever done it, uh, there are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs and uh, makes a nice chapter a day kind of reading if you wanted to go through a month of reading through the book of Proverbs or perhaps 12 months in a row, one year, and reading it. Chapter 3 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. It's amazing how much people spend on trying to do those kinds of things And yet here we have the book of Proverbs with this rich promise of offering, um, uh, prolonging your life many years and bringing you prosperity, a rich and flourishing life. Um, However many years we have, however many days we have, we want them to be good um, and to have value, meaning, and purpose. And so wisdom is flowing from uh, this, this father speaking to his son, and we can learn so much about that in our relationship with God. Verse 3 says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Wow, great character traits. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Everybody respects the persons that they know uh, that are loving, that are faithful. They keep their word. They, they respect others. Uh, so they're faithful to others uh, in so many ways. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God, a man. And then here it is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. More about that verse uh, from the Kellers in just a second. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So there's actually a physiological benefit that attends or comes with um, being in pursuit of wisdom and, and attending to your soul and, and nurturing the fear of the Lord in your own life. Honor the Lord with the wealth with the fir- from your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops. Now, I don't know what your crops are. Your crops might be anything from uh, uh, being serving on a, on a factory line. You might be in government. You might be, um, you might be a business owner, whatever it might be. The point here is honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. And so there's this, uh, uh, this call for generosity and this call for honoring God with the resources he's entrusted to us. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. And it just goes on and on. It's just a really great chapter from the book of Proverbs. Highly recommend you read it. Let's see what Tim and Kathy Keller have uh, to say about some of these verses here in chapter three of the book of Proverbs. Identify your idols is the title of uh, this first little section from uh, God's Wisdom for Navigating Life by Tim and Kathy Keller. Proverbs chapter 3 lists six things that can serve as the marks of a wise person and at the same time are the means for growing in wisdom. The first is trust in the Lord. You can believe in God yet still trust something else for your real significance and happiness which is therefore your real God. We hide how we do this from ourselves and 
It is only when something goes wrong with, say, your career or your family that you realize it is much more important to you than the Lord himself. That's so true. I think most of us simply don't have that kind of self-awareness um, and, and, and sort of, uh, you know, we, we sort of hide even from ourselves what things we have put at the center. Um, the Kellers go on to say, what does this have to do with wisdom? Everything. There are excessive emotions surrounding things you make the functional trust of your heart, whether it's your career, wealth, spouse, children, or some romantic relationship, you will be inordinately shaken, anxious, angry, or despondent if anything threatens them. They cloud your judgment, distort your vision of yourself and the world. Idolatries of the heart lead to foolishness in life. Ooh, that's worth saying again. Idolatries of the heart lead to foolishness in life. Life. So when I put something at the center that is not God, even if it's a good thing, um, those idolatries, those the way I, I create an idol there, um, leads me to foolishness in the rest of my life. Keller's go on. The ultimate remedy for idolatry is the gospel. Mm. We won't need to justify ourselves by works, by success or romance or achievement, if we are freely justified by faith in Jesus. What is the best candidate in your life for an alternate God? Great question to ask, something we need to ponder. Um, and uh, remember that old saying uh, attributed to Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. Um, it's good to stop occasionally and examine one's life, examine what we've put at the center. And uh, I find myself, I mean, I, I literally can see it in my own life, that when I put Jesus first, even before my wife, even before my, my minister, whatever, if I put Jesus first, if he's preeminent in my life, it actually makes me a better husband. It makes me a better pastor. It makes me a better friend and a better son. Uh, it makes me a better manager of uh, of my household and, and the, the things that are entrusted to me. You see how that works, don't you? First things first. You don't get first things right by putting them second. And uh, Jesus is the one that should be first. Now, he said, uh, the Kellers rather said, that there were, in Proverbs 3, six things that can serve as the marks of a wise person and at the same time are the means for growing in wisdom. So that first one is trust in the Lord. Uh, the second one, and I'll read, I'll read that one as well, and then I'm going to encourage you to grab a copy of God's Wisdom for Navigating Life Yourself, and uh, perhaps you'll be able to read the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth of them as you uh, go along. But the second one, a second mark and means of wisdom, is to submit to God in all your ways. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding, and in all your ways, submit to Him. This is so good. Uh, every area of life, say the, the Kellers. And don't lean on your own understanding. Our culture tells us to submit everything to our understanding, to question everything, including the Bible. But everyone must choose something to not question. Modern people don't question their right and ability to question everything. So everyone is living by faith in some ultimate authority. Proverbs calls us, to make it God and God's word, not our reason, not our intuition. I once heard uh, one speaker say that the, uh, the, the only worldview that postmoderns don't question is their own. And that's, that's quite telling, isn't it? It's quite, uh, <laughs> it shows how lopsided they would be. But if there were uh, an authority a, a, a fountainhead source for wisdom and truth. Um, this entire Bible is a call, an invitation, if you will, to turn to the Lord, who is that fountain of wisdom and truth. Um, Jesus, when he was walking the planet, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Didn't say I'm one of many, 
didn't say I'm a way, you get to choose kind of whatever you want, whatever. It's not that sort of amorphous spirituality, that ambiguous um, understanding of reality. I, that's what I love about the clarity of the Bible. Very beautiful, poetic, uh, but true at the same time. When you put truth and beauty together, man, that resonates. Uh, let's see what else the killers have to say. Modern people, they say, don't question their right and ability to question everything, and they should. I've heard Tim say before, doubt your doubts. It's okay to have doubts. My last name's Thomas. I know what that means. But doubt your doubts. Question your doubts. I think it's a good thing to do. And um, the truth will surface ultimately. And um, looking to Jesus, who made that bold claim about being the truth, that's so uh, for, for those of us who follow Jesus, those of us who have given our lives to Jesus on a daily basis, we need to keep going back to that over and over again. Proverbs calls us, says the Kellers, to make God's word, not our reason or our intuition or what we feel, but to make God's word the source for wisdom. They go on to say, the Bible can guide you in all your ways, even when there is not a specific verse for every life situation. As you immerse yourself in the Bible story of a personal God who made us and saved us for a relationship with him, it makes every part of life, how you spend your money, relate to people, allocate your time, how you see yourself, it makes all of that look different than if you didn't believe the story of the Bible. Kellers are so, it's, it's just so brilliant the way and that they can sort of bring this all to the fore for us. Then wisdom grows as you live daily life shaped by the biblical narrative and divine realities. That's worth reading again, isn't it? Yeah. Wisdom grows as you live daily life shaped by the biblical narrative and the divine realities. That's why we want to study through books of the Bible and uh, give so much attention to it here at the Village Chapel. Last paragraph from the Kellers. Are you seeking to understand the Bible's main themes and the big picture story rather than merely seeking inspiration from individual Bible verses? And that's uh, a lot of us uh, have grown up doing that with, with sort of lift a verse out of context, claim it for our own and apply it in some area of our life that may or may not have ever been intended to be about. Um, and this is so important for us to look at the meta narrative, the overarching story uh, of the scriptures, the big picture, as the Kellers say right here. Well, they close with a prayer. As you can see, if you're on, watching on YouTube, uh, there's a prayer at the bottom of each of their pages. I'll make that our prayer for today. Would you pray with me? Lord, I want to not just study your word like a book, but to inwardly digest it, making it part of me. Let your word dwell richly within me so I can have your wisdom to guide myself and my loved ones. Pray that you would do this for the sake of Jesus and for his glory, the one who is the word made flesh himself. In his name we pray, amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.